everyone, and welcome to The Balancing Act. I'm Olga Villaverde. And I'm Montel Williams. Today, what you need to know about Medicare. And ways to manage your debt. That's important. And we'll speak to a passionate advocate in the rare disease community whose daughter was diagnosed with Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, better known as LGS Montel. And it all starts right now because The Balancing Act starts right, right now. now. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, more than 56 million adults ages 65 and older live in the United States, accounting for about 16.9 percent of the nation's population. An estimated 10,000 adults every single day turn 65. I'm one of them with retirement right around the corner. It's time to consider Medicare. That's right. There are lots of choices, so being informed is so critical. And one company is committed to focusing on the needs of our senior population. Wow. And here with more is Caroline Coates. Humana's regional president for Florida. Welcome and thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Excited sure. to be here. This is really an important topic. So, Caroline, I want to start with just uh, tell us a little bit about how Medicare works because a lot of people out there get confused. It is confusing. Um, Medicare itself, original Medicare, is a federal funded program that uh, provides health insurance when you turn 65. And you can start to enroll in Medicare three months before your 65th birthday. So I encourage you kind of go out in Medicare.gov site. I agree. And, and start to research what options homework. are out there. Do your homework. And you can enroll all the way up to three months after your 65th birthday. In most, like, in most scenarios, you will automatically be enrolled in original Medicare, but you should go out and check and make sure that when you turn 65, you have that original Medicare coverage. And then in addition to the original Medicare coverage, there are Medicare Advantage plans that offer additional benefits beyond the hospital and the physician coverage. And all of those plans with all their different options are on the medicare.gov site which is where I encourage people to start and learn and first understand what your own needs might be. And it's so important to talk about this because we talked about these numbers right off the top and these numbers will increase no doubt in the next decade I'm assuming right? Oh absolutely the statistics are staggering in fact in 10 years our country for the first time ever will have more people living over the age of 65 than people living under the age of 18. Wow. Can you imagine Are that? Are you kidding me? And in fact, by 2050, we will have tripled the number of people living in their 80s, 90s, and 100s. Amazing. That's insane. Wow. Well, what makes it so confusing is there's so many different options out there. Can you tell us a little bit about the different types of coverage? Yeah, so again, the original Medicare, and this is where I'll hit you with a little bit of alphabet soup. There's the Medicare Part A, which it covers all of your hospital needs. If the unfortunate event, you're in a hospital, Part B is more the medical coverage, physician office visits, that type of a thing. D are the drugs. That's the only one that kind of makes sense, right? The Medicare Part D. And so the original covers that A and B where you can purchase the D separately. And there are no uh, specific restraints on a provider network. So if you're seeing a doctor, you want to make sure you see a doctor, so long as he or she takes Medicare, you can go to that network. Then there's Medicare Advantage, which are the private plans like Humana and other plans out there that kind of bundle it all together. So it's the A and the B and the D, and just to make it more confusing, we call it all C. So Medicare Part C would be a private Medicare Advantage plan compared to original Medicare. You're telling me something that I'm going, wow, that's a lot to take in. So let's say for those who are beneficiaries and they're starting out, I mean, where do they begin? Because obviously, you know, Montel's needs, are, well, he's not even there yet, <laughs> <laughs> but Montel's needs may be different from mine or yours. So where do we begin? Yeah, and you hit the nail on the head, right? Understanding your own needs. Everyone's health conditions and needs are, are unique and they're unique now and they might be different next year in a couple years. So I encourage you to kind of first stop and do an assessment of what you need. Do you have a chronic condition? Is there a particular physician or hospital that's really important for you or the loved one for whom you're trying to, I'm actually helping my mom through this a little bit right now. So understanding what your unique needs are. And then the first step is online, Medicare, Gov. You'll learn about original Medicare there, the A and B that I mentioned, and then they also link uh, to all, all the different Medicare Advantage plans. They're listed by different star ratings. So you can see from one to five, there are stars that are associated with each plan that represent different quality results. And then from there, you can link on to the different plans. And most of those sites will then even connect you to a phone number, mm -hmm. you know, for that particular plan if you're interested in and maybe could speak to a broker to kind of walk you oh, through fantastic. your options. That's fantastic. Oh, that's good. For sure. Now, yeah, it's kind of crazy, but I always thought Humana was just an insurance company. No, it's a healthcare. 
wow. company. I knew that. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yeah. the Met Office? So we're, we're proud of the journey we've made and kind of going from an insurance company with elements of health to a healthcare company with elements of insurance. And we fundamentally believe that really understanding our beneficiaries' needs outside of their clinical diagnosis is really important, right? Do they have access to healthy food? Do they have safe transportation? Are they lonely? And so we try to address these needs through different benefit offerings beyond what they need just in a physician's or hospital's uh, office. So in fact, half of our employee, more than half of our employees are clinicians themselves. So it's really embedded in our DNA to connect clinically and socially with our members. What I hear is, you know, one size doesn't fit all. Everybody's different, but Humana really has something to offer for everyone. We do. We offer various products kind of along a continuum, whether you want more of a gated type product, referrals, no referrals, different options. You know, every product is different based on where you live. So I try to meet everyone's needs. And there's that initial enrollment period that I mentioned when you turn 65. And then every year you can switch. You don't have to. Oh. But every year, between October 15th and December 7th. You can do all this research again and make a, a different choice as we know our healthcare needs change. So for our viewers who'd like more information, especially me, which I'm gonna get there in about 30 years? Uh, I thought like, it was like 35. Right, there you yeah, go, thank you, you go. so much. Mm -hmm. For our viewers who'd like more information, where can they go? Medicare.gov, it's the first uh, stop on this confusing train, and from there you'll learn a little bit more about original Medicare, and, and then again, link to the different plan options. Oh, but you made it so much and easier course, for us. Of course, if you want more information, you can also go to our website, thebalancingact.com. Thank you so much for being here and being part of the show today. Thank you, really great opportunity. Thank, thank you. you, and we'll be right back. Credit cards are a pretty common staple in our financial toolbox these days. Many of us use a credit card to help pay bills, while others may need one to help build their credit score. Whatever the need, it's important to know your goals, especially if you're building credit for the first time, or you may be rebuilding credit after a difficult life event, because they happen. Here today to help us understand what kind of card may be best for us and offer some great tips is a leader from Premier Bank Card. We want to welcome Leroy Franco. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, so I know you probably field so many calls from so many people, and I guess what I want to, what should our viewers understand about credit cards as a whole? Well, I do have a few key points. First, you need to think of a credit card as a loan, so it's important that you're able to repay that loan. Second, if you have a lower credit score, you may have to pay more fees in the beginning, but as your credit score increases, you may be able to qualify for lower fees. Okay. And then also, your credit line is the amount that you can use. It's not the amount that you should use. It's important that you only use your credit card as needed and be responsible. Great information there. So let's recap. Make sure you can afford the payments. Absolutely. Low credit score cards equals actually cards with higher fees and be responsible with your line of credit. Uh, my next question is really just credit cards as a whole, right? How do we know what's best for us? It, I mean, there's just so many. Right. Well, that depends on your financial goals and your specific needs. So, for example, if you don't do much traveling, then a travel card probably wouldn't do you much good. Good point. Some examples of different credit cards are there's cards that earn you rewards, there's cards that save you money on interest, and there's cards that help you build and rebuild your credit. So, if you have reasonably good uh, credit score, then perhaps an unsecured card is your best option. However, if you're building your credit for the first time or you're rebuilding your credit after you've experienced a uh, a life event such as a bankruptcy or a divorce, then maybe you need to consider a secured card. I didn't know there were so many. So rewards cards, that's if that fits into your life, cards that save on interest, cards for rebuilding credit, secured and unsecured credit cards. I wanna take those two in the bottom. Can you just expand a little bit more on what secured and unsecured cards are? Absolutely. So a unsecured card is what most of us would consider a traditional credit card. This is where a bank establishes a line of credit with no collateral needed. If you find yourself not being approved by most companies, then perhaps a secured credit card is your best option. This is where you'd fund a deposit to establish the line of credit. Managing a secured card properly will help build your credit so that you can graduate to unsecured cards. Okay, so to recap that, an unsecured card, traditional credit card, but secured deposit establishes your credit line. Finally, what about if people out there are saying, well, you know, I've been rejected by mainstream cards. What can I do to improve my credit score? Any options there? Definitely. So at Premier, we're different by design. We know that you're more than just a credit score, and we approve people that most credit card companies won't. We work every day with our cardholders to help them build and rebuild their credit. 
It's what we do. I love hearing that. So Premier is different by design, approves lower credit scores, believes in second chances. So for anyone out there who says, okay, I need that second chance, where can they go, Leroy? They can get more information at mypremiercreditcard.com. Thank you so much for what you do. Appreciate you your so time. Much. And if you'd like more information, our website, thebalancingact.com. It's a rare neurodevelopmental disorder that affects approximately 50,000 children and adults in the United States and more than a million worldwide. Wow. You know, no one is born with it. Instead, it evolves over time in very young children from treatment-resistant seizures. We're going to start with Tracy Dixon Salazar, the executive director of the only global organization focused on helping those who suffer. We're going behind the mystery of lennox Gasto syndrome. Tracy knows firsthand the devastating effect of LGS. Her daughter, Savannah, developed it at five years old as a result of uncontrollable epilepsy, which began when she was two. She started having seizures every day. She quickly started having more than one type of seizure. And she started having them so frequently that a good day was five to 10 seizures a day, and a bad day was hundreds too many to count. And so her brain was trying to grow and it was trying to put itself together the way that a, a toddler's brain does. And yet she had all of these seizures that were preventing that from happening. And it really impacted her learning her, and her memory and her ability to retain information over time. It was just the most scary, helpless, frustrating uh, feeling in the world. And it was happening to one of the most precious things in my life, my baby girl, and there was really nothing that we could do to stop it. The Balancing Act is on location at NYU's Comprehensive Epilepsy Center to meet with Dr. Oren Davinsky. lennox gasto syndrome is a disorder typically beginning in childhood, uh, often in young childhood, several seizure types, often difficult to control, often including either tonic or atonic seizures, intellectual disability or developmental delays, and specific features on the EEG. And the two most important ones are slow spike and wave discharges, and the other classic EEG feature of LGS is called generalized paroxysmal fast activity, and it's a relatively specific signature for LGS. Determined to be part of the research community committed to understanding LGS, Tracy enrolled in college and received her bachelor's degree and ultimately her PhD. Once we have processed getting the diagnosis of LGS, and we got up off the floor, wiped our tears, and decided we were gonna move forward. And this is really when I hit school full force. I wanted to understand what doctors were thinking and what they were saying because I couldn't fix it. I couldn't help my daughter. And I wanted to do something that could try to help her as we're sitting there watching her lose her skills, lose her ability, and maybe lose her life. There are many potential underlying causes of LGS, like genetic disorders or lack of oxygen to the brain. Unfortunately today, the medications that we have available are not fully effective in controlling seizures for the vast majority of these individuals. There's no cure. We wish there was a magic bullet, but medicine's not close to that at this time. By the time she was 18, she had had more than 40,000 seizures. She had tried and failed more than 26 different treatments, and we were losing her. And I think the worst part of all of that was that two to four times a week, she would go into status epilepticus, nonstop seizures, where we would have to intervene to stop the seizures with medicines. But if that didn't work, it was a trip to the emergency room where they would give her more drugs intravenously, and if that didn't work, she'd be put into a medically induced coma. And that was our life for 16 years. The impact of LGS on a family 
is, I think, unimaginable. Parents live on edge. At any point, their child could go into what could be a life-threatening seizure. Their children go to sleep at night, and they may have to worry about sudden, unexpected death and epilepsy, SUDEP. Uh, and unfortunately, there are just many ways that these individuals who suffer from uncontrolled seizures really can impact mortality. Their judgment's impaired about what's safe and what's not safe, so they really have to be watched closely. It was during my postdoc, and my advisor asked if we wanted to do genetic sequencing on Savannah, and we jumped at the chance um, for this opportunity. What we discovered was there was something wrong with her calcium pathway, which means that maybe we can fix it. And we actually ultimately ended up finding a drug that went in there and patched up a hole that was letting too much of the calcium in. And it was amazing the results that we saw after we put her on that. Dropped her seizures down exponentially. She's growing again and she's developing and she's walking and talking and it's like we met her for the first time. All right, that's amazing, you did it. I just remember thinking, wow, our lives are, are really different than they used to be. She's just growing into a lovely young woman that we were told would never live to be 28 years old. The future and hope for people with LGS has never been brighter. There are several medications that will be undergoing clinical trials. There are gene therapies for certain rare disorders that can be part of the LGS spectrum. And I think there are new neuroscientific techniques that will allow us to treat seizures and other disabilities more effectively in the future. Our progress in science has been exponential, and I do believe there's a lot of hope for these individuals. The mission of the Lennox Gastaut Syndrome Foundation is to improve the lives of individuals impacted by Lennox Gastaut Syndrome or LGS. That includes the whole family. And we do this by raising money for research, by supporting and empowering our families, and educating the community about what LGS is. Since I took over as the executive director at the LGS Foundation about a year ago, we have lost many children and adults that have LGS in our community. and. It's heartbreaking to see the struggles that they go through, and it is a life-threatening illness. And we believe at the foundation that if patients and families are a part of the, the creation of new medicines, of new programs, of new interventions, if you're actually uh, working with us and, and not designing at us but or for us, that we'll go further faster. The LGS Foundation has been extraordinary and has been a major mover of, I think, pushing science forward. I think the community building and bringing families together uh, may be the most important part of this because people share experiences, people share knowledge of techniques that work, doctors who have been especially sensitive and helpful and caring for their children. So I think all of those things are intangibles when they're all put together. The LGS Foundation has just been an amazing benefit for this community. The one thing I think that she's taught us is to live in the moment. Um, she doesn't fret about the past. She doesn't worry about the future. She just lives in the now and whatever is in front of her. And we try to do that with her. Um, I don't know what the future holds, but we have had 11 amazing years. Our lives are so different than they were 11 years ago. And we are just gonna enjoy every second of it. And we're also just gonna keep fighting for every other LGS out family out there that they find some stability and some seizure control like we did. For more information on Lennox Gasto Syndrome, visit lgsfoundation.org. And of course, you can always visit our website, thebalancingact.com. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for joining us today. Remember to head to our Facebook page, like us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and visit thebalancingact.com to enter our latest sweepstake or the giveaway because right. you might just win something. We will give you something. There you go. Love that family of yours. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.